In today's video, we are gonna be talking about recruiting. By the end of this video, you will learn exactly how to dominate in the recruiting space. Look, I've been in the recruiting and team building game for 17 years. I've trained thousands of agents over these years to help scale their business, improve recruiting, retention, and ultimately achieving what we all want, financial freedom. Look, the recruiting industry is changing and there's gonna be two outcomes for people. Outcome number one is they're gonna thrive. There will be recruiters that thrive through these times that we're going through, but the second, and most likely for most people, is the struggle to survive. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna break down the tips and strategies that you need to be mindful of in this post pandemic era. Cause let's face it, it can be hard to find good people. Even though more people need you than ever, it can be hard to find people that actually wanna work. Recruiters are getting burnt out and at the end of the day, a lot of recruiters are leaving the industry. I see it happening every single month and I don't want that to happen to you. So if you're ready to grow, if you're ready to grow your business and your recruiting, then keep watching. So without further ado, let's get into what you can do to dominate in your recruiting business. Point number one, you need to expect to recruit every qualified person you sit down with. What do I mean by that? First of all, by qualified, I mean that these candidates fit the exact criteria that you're looking for, for your team or the team you're recruiting to. Let's just assume that. But you need to expect every single person you sit down with to join you. Look, recruiters that expect everyone to join typically do the best. There's so many in the recruiting space that sit down and just hope to recruit people, but they secretly expect to fail. The person with the most confidence, the most conviction, right? The person that is the most certain wins every single conversation. So point number one is I want you to expect to recruit every single person that you sit down with that you think is a good candidate for you. Number two, ask great questions to find their pain points. What problem are you helping them try and solve? See, the best recruiters are intel gatherers. They ask the best questions. In a recruiting interview, you should be listening 80% of the time. Every time they're done talking, you should ask another question until you know exactly what they want. The worst recruiters that I know love to hear themselves speak. They talk all the time and they get terrible results. The best ones ask the best questions. Like, what did you do in your previous career? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? All the questions that will lead to their dominant human need. Maybe they have a need of certainty. Maybe they have a need of uncertainty or significance or loving connection or growth or contribution. Your job as a recruiter is to find out what is their dominant need and to tailor the opportunity that you're trying to give them to that need. Next point, look for people who have already been successful in an area of their life. And you don't need a project. You don't want a fixer upper. You want to recruit people who already know how to succeed. Look for people that are resilient or have shown some kind of resiliency in their past. Dig deep to find out where this person has had success. Maybe it was in sports. Maybe they had a successful and loyal career. Maybe they married for 30 years. Maybe they raised some really good children. Or maybe they used to be a professional singer or a great artistic talent in another area. All future champions had wins in the past and you are trying to recruit future champions, so I recommend looking for people that have won in the past. My next point, the recruiting business is not a 40 hour work week. If you're planning on an eight hour work day, five days a week, just go pick a different industry. This one is not for you. You gotta treat this like it's your own business. Like you own the firm. 10 plus hours a day in the beginning, five, six days a week minimum. And then a lot of great things start to happen at that point. You gotta learn your craft. You gotta be person developing. You gotta be researching and become a better version of yourself. You gotta be willing to pay the price. This is not a toll road. If you wanna be a great recruiter, you gotta pay the price up front. This is one of the highest paying fields on the entire planet, but you gotta treat it like that. You can't show up at nine and leave at three or four and think you had a successful day. In the beginning, you gotta put in the work but I'll tell you what, if you do, being a master recruiter would be one of the greatest things that you ever learned to do in your entire life. I promise you. My next point, find a successful recruiter and duplicate what they're doing. Look, find someone that's good at it and do what they're doing. Ask them what they did to become successful. Ask them what they would do differently at the beginning of their career. You gotta get your ego out of the way. There's a lot of great recruiters out there. I happen to be one of them. I know a lot of them. You know a lot of them too. You gotta pick the right mentor. If you wanna be a great recruiter, you gotta pick a great recruiter as a mentor. Okay, you ready for this one? This is my next point. Become a student of the game. 
Study the game. Become a consumer of the industry, a human sponge, soaking it all up. You should always be reading books to try and improve your craft in an area. Re reading recruiting books, leadership books, sales books, reading books in the area that you need to grow. Reading how to attract people, right? At least two, three, four, five, ten 10 pages a day. Don't just read books to read books. Read books and personally develop to get you better at people. Reading people, asking questions, leadership. John Maxwell is a great place to start. This guy is Mr. Leadership, right? Ed Milet on building people. He just released a great book, The Power of One More. He wrote a previous book called Max Out. Don't just blanket read. You should be reading books that pertain to your area. My next point is this. I recommend developing a niche and owning it. What's your niche? You're a recruiter, right? Who are you targeting? The best recruiters that I know are dialed into their niche. The best recruiters I know are targeting athletes or stay-at-home moms or professional workers. Who is your bread and butter? Who's your bread and butter market that you want to be known for? Who is it? If your scope is too wide and you're looking for everybody and anybody, you know what's crazy? You're never going to find the right person. By going too wide, you're never going to find the right person. So make sure you niche down and you figure out, these are the kinds of people that I'm looking for. These are the kinds of qualities that I want on my team or the team that I'm recruiting to. And once you start to figure that out, your reticulated activating system goes off and you start to find those people. And you start to find them way quicker than you ever did before when you had no standard and no scope. All right, you guys, by now you have learned some strategies that you need to implement to make sure that you are on the winning side of your recruiting business. Look, I also create videos on leadership, finance, mindset. So make sure that you watch out for them. And thanks for watching. And if you have any topics that you would like me to cover regarding recruiting, agent attraction, leadership, or anything else, please leave them in the comments below. I read all my comments and I would love to reply to all of them. So thanks for tuning in as usual. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks everybody.